uh, through Facebook about four years ago, uh, through the first screen uh, carving thing we working with, and I saw his work, and I was like, there was a lot of people doing carving, and I saw his work, and I was blown away, and I started, you know, messaging back and forth, and I said, you, you have to come to this event. I said, people are going to be blown away by his work. And he was like, well, I don't know if I can get away. He was like, he had some crappy job doing insulating <laughs> doors and some, I don't know what it was. And you know, he says, well, I don't know if I can get away. And, uh, and then he shows up here and uh, he said, well, I couldn't get vacation, so I quit my job. <laughs> and I was like, dude, right. way to go, you know? Right on. And um, so he's been, he missed a couple, first year he came with his little sister, and then he missed the year. There's the bell, anyways. Uh, and then he missed a year, and then he's been here the last two years. Last year came with Phil. And then last year I, was, I saw this. This is the one I saw late Saturday night, and I was like, dude, I said, you would have to do a design presentation on the spoon design. And I've been working with him trying to sort of come up with material here for his first uh, presentation to a bunch of his peers. It's all yours. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. So, yeah, I just learned design by looking at other people's work. And um, I had to learn how to, to, to bring some points, um, concepts, that I, I think I use when I design stuff. So I think they help me and I, I think they'll help you too. Um, the first one is function is a skeleton of balanced design. Um, it's it's kind of like a framework. Um, it's not that you can't have like beautiful balanced design without function, but it just kind of constrains it and makes it something more balanced, more not like loud or exaggerated, I guess. Um, so I think what I'm going to start out here with is drawing a profile. And this is how I see the angles and how they, they should look. So the first, the handle. Oops. Too much. OK, that's, that's, this is a handle of an eating spoon. So you hold it like this, like, like this one. So design your spoons around how you hold them. I mean, that's, if you want it to fit in your hand. Um, and then I bring this angle down here, or curve. And then it's uh, this, like that. So this is the top of my spoon. It's a little exaggerated. It would be, I don't, I don't draw it perfect the first time. I kind of carve as I draw. So it's, it's kind of a process for me of, um, getting the perfect curve in line. And I just love flowing lines, but I can't really just draw them the first time. So if you had an issue, you can still make good spoons. It's just not going to be as fast. But it's, I, I look at it as I'm carving while I'm drawing. So there was just a chip that I just took off right there that I can know that I can go to that instead of just like looking at it and carving, looking at it and carving, get, get a better design faster that way. That's the top, and I like the way I'm drawing it. It's kind of like this, but you're actually going to be using it more like this and scooping it out of a bowl or whatever. So I kind of think of it more like this, but um, so it looks a little flat, but it's actually that's quite a steep curve there, um, and you want that to get down into the bowl. If your bowl's like this wide, you don't want to like straight spoon because it's, it's not going to really get in there. And then for an eating spoon, you want it to be fairly shallow. I always end up drawing this a little deep and then I come back and say, oh, because if you draw it like this and then carve to those lines, now you've like got a spoon that doesn't you put it in your mouth and it doesn't feel right. And you're like, oh, well now I've got to carve all this wood and reshape it. And sometimes it just doesn't turn out right that way. So that's, that's kind of, Maybe even a little too deep yet, but something like that. And I, I draw this stuff on the wood. Um, it's not perfect like this, but it's the more I do it, the closer to perfect I get.
So I'm kind of trying to find this perfect spot here. I one when I started to do this kind of thing here, it's kind of really comes from silverware. A lot of silverware has a shape and Bill Stubbs years ago told me to look at the silverware you like. I mean, it's not wood, but it's still, if it feels good in your hand and everything, um, then copy it. There's no reason not to. Um, anyways, this on silverware here is about this thick. So right in here. And if you hold it like this, there's, here I'll pass this one around and brought this one. This was kind of a testament, it's not finished. It's out of mulberry. If you have mulberry, it's a really good, easy carving wood and it's easy to find on fence rows and stuff. But I'll pass this around because this right here, in my hand anyways, it might be different for everybody's hand, or I mean, I know it would be, so it might not fit exactly in yours, but it fills it, fills this space right here. And it doesn't look like a triangle, but this right here, when you do it this way, cross section of approximately like a triangle. So like, that's a triangle there, but then I've got it rounded off here and rounded off here. And that's upside down, <laughs> upside down but, um, but yeah, like this. Um, so yeah, just pass it around and fill it and you kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. And then I like this line down here to mirror this line somewhat. I just, I just like the way that looks. So anyways, back to skeleton framework. Okay, so chalk doesn't really work very good on a wet chalkboard. <laughs> So what I'm trying to say here is the skeleton is that the function and the way it constrains this curve here, I could make this curve like like that, you know, like, you know, I guess you'd say rolls mowing has got the really pretty curves and stuff in it. You could do that, but it's, it's not that it's bad. It's just not as like balanced and like subtle. Um, and so if I can't really, go any further with this curve without starting to make it uncomfortable to use. Make, I'm starting to change the angle between here and the way you hold it in your hand, like this. What I found is I see a lot of spoons that are really flat. And so it's, it's just not, it has to do with how your wrist holds it when you hold the, the bowl level. Um, does that make sense? Like. So you've you're got something liquid in here, and it kind of puts your wrist at a neutral um, position, so it's comfortable. And that is a little confusing on mine, because that line is actually right here, and then I kind of have this curve come up, so it actually will only hold liquid to about here, if that was level, like this. Okay, so that's, that's how function kind of constrains the curves and the angles that, that you can do. And it, I feel like it kind of um, brings balance to form. It's not exaggerated, it's not loud, it's just kind of, it's there, but it's, it's subtle. Um, so yeah, that's why I use the word, well, the reason I use the word balance design is kind of what I came up with because you could say symmetrical and then you'd have a spoon that's that's balanced you know it's even you look at like somebody's face you've got eyes on both sides you've got it's it's balanced out or whatever um, but what I do is a lot of asymmetrical stuff so the this spoon right here the bowl let's see here. So the end of it is asymmetrical. So now this is a right-handed spoon and you scrape like this with it, the front edge. And then I can drop 
this. Oops. I can drop this down a little bit. It's kind of something hard to get perfect. I kind of work at this. Um, you don't want it to be too far off, because then it starts to feel funny. And then this angle. So it's not symmetrical, but I think I'll pass the spoon around and I think you'll see there's a lot of asymmetry in here, but it still feels balanced. It doesn't feel weird or, you know, like you see like surreal, like paintings or whatever. There's something to that, but it's not something you really want to pick pick up and put in your mouth. It's just kind of weird and out of balance. So I'll pass that around too. So that's the first point. I, um, Did, it, did everybody get that or make sense? Okay. Um, so form is the art of line. What I mean by that is what we're doing is I see all of this in lines because when you look at something you just see the, the lines of it and that's how you perceive like this beam. You see this this line here and this plane and, and all of this and that's how you understand it. But then if you start to add like a chamfer on here, then it starts to add like a different dimension and, and it's just it's just how we see is through the silhouettes of things. So these lines are how we perceive the spoon and how we decide whether it's balanced or out of balance or exaggerated or not. Um, the thing that's really great about our spoons is we can we can add a lot of extra lines like I said chamfers and stuff in here and I actually like bring this one over here and here and that adds it adds dimension to the spoon that wouldn't otherwise be there um, and uh, it just it brings dimension and focus and the, it just makes it pop in a way that if it was just a smooth continuous form all the, the only line you would see would be the silhouette of whatever it is so that's that's what i'm talking about in this um point number three is balance design is the art of subtleties and what I'm talking about there is, I have already kind of talked about it, like there's exaggerations of lines and stuff. And what I found when I was trying to duplicate some of Billy's work or whoever's work that it was inspiring to me, it was really easy for me to see that line and be like, wow, that's really cool curve or detail. But then I kind of tend to exaggerate it, tended to exaggerate it when I was first learning. And, um, it just it wasn't it wasn't a great design it was just an okay design but as you start to focus and get to like the subtle differences and angles um i brought this one because this is actually instead of just being like straight down here it actually is scooped out and that just adds like this just it just changes it it's a subtle difference um so i'll pass that around but there's also subtle details, and uh, I asked Nick, I noticed on Nick's glasses he has these little rivets, and they just pop because they're just a different color. So I don't know how, if everybody could see them, but they're just like a little, little tiny detail that makes it from just like a plain black frame to something that has just a little bit more and makes it kind of a great design. So that's what I'm talking about. You need. To, to bring your spoons from just good to great, start looking at the subtle subtle differences in details and angles. Like like I said, if this was too much of a curve, it would just kind of put the design off. Oh yeah, this this is something I made when I was thinking about it. Let me pass this around. This side is um, different than this side. This was just like a straight in cut, you know. You just think I'm gonna do a chip curve, so I'm gonna straight in. This side, I thought I'll add a little curve to it, and it's just that little curve that makes it mm, to yeah. This is something I really like, so I'll pass that around too. 
Um, so yeah, that's what I. Um, that's basically the concepts. I thought I'd talk a little bit about how we achieve those things that we inspire to do. Um, I'm actually going to look at my notes for this. I had some good, a good um, point here. I remember how I said it. Um, Jim, did you bring my knife? My butter knife? No, I didn't bring that. Um, no, it was the one that Heather did, and it was just, it kind of showed how it looks like if you just round the edge over instead of putting chamfers and stuff on it. Okay, so um, to achieve balanced design, you need a combination of knowledge, inspiration, and skill. Um, inspiration is just like looking around and just you know you see something beautiful and you just kind of wow this is great and you just I don't know that you necessarily copy what you see but you just it just kind of can bring it into your work by just being inspired by it um, and knowledge base is, is you just continue to look at stuff and grow in your knowledge of design it's just like you have that in you to subconsciously just you start adding it to your own design, screen designs. Um, and then practice, um, just keep doing it and then you'll get better. Um, and skill, you'll never, what I mean by skill is not design skill, but skill to actually apply it. Because as a spoon carver, you're not just a designer, you're actually a maker. So you, you've got to keep bringing your physical skill to make things well up so that you can actually achieve what you what you want to. And uh, copy, I mean, sometimes I, I think I used to feel bad about copying other people's work, but it's actually, I think everybody does it, and I think it's the best way to learn because you'll never quite understand what you like about it or what's good about it until you try to copy it. And it's like, I didn't quite get that, you know? And then you can try again and try again until you get it. And that there's something to that. You don't have to feel like you have to do something totally original. That that kind of comes in time and it's, it's really, even if it's original, it's built on other people's work. Um, and focus would be my last thing about achieving it. It's so easy to just be like, I want to do ladles, I want to do eating spoons, I want to do chip carving, and I want to get achieve all these different things. But you scatter yourself out so much that you never really get that refinement to your work. So if you can just um, focus on one thing at a time, and, and I think you'll see to see your work kind of grow and get better. Um, and finally, seek help. Um, we all need help and you can always, I think, get a better opinion of your work from somebody else than yourself. And things that you'll probably never quite get unless you ask somebody's help. Um, and then be open to criticism. It's kind of hard to hear somebody say, well, you could have done this a little bit better. But I feel like, just like I said, seeking help, it's just like, you can't, you need somebody else's eyes to see it and tell you, oh, and then you're like, oh yeah, right, I can do that, but I didn't, I didn't see what I was doing wrong. And um, so that's it. Um, I'm willing to answer any questions, and then after the questions, if you have like a spoon that you'd like me to look at, um, and help you with your criticisms or whatever, I, I'm open the rest of today and possibly tomorrow. So you that's used it. the word I've not heard before. What's that? The chafers. Is that what the word? Chamfer. Chamfer. Can yeah. you define that nicely? Um, it's a bevel. I mean, like what if you lines? look at this, it doesn't have a strong chamfer, but it has a, a slight chamfer, and that just Softens, softens it, but then also, like on these spoons, the chamfer is significant, mm -hmm. so then it adds like a different dimension to it. Any other questions or?